Infection Control Study Guide. Understanding infection control is very important in our industry. Be sure to read the full chapter in your textbook. Information is not limited to the one shown in this video. Please download any reference study material that is provided by your state board to help you better prepare for your test. Go over the outline of all chapters your test will consist of and be sure to reread your textbook for a better understanding. Infection Control Vocabulary Cleaning is a mechanical process using soap and water or detergent and water to remove all visible dirt, debris, and many disease-causing germs. Sanitizing is a chemical process for reducing the number of disease-causing germs on clean surfaces to a safe level. Infection control professionals consider sanitation to be a layperson's term or a product marketing term, as in hand sanitizers, preferring cleaning to describe the step before disinfecting. Disinfecting is a chemical process for use on non-porous items that uses a specific product to destroy harmful organisms including bacteria, viruses, and fungi, except bacterial spores, on implements and environmental surfaces. Sterilizing is the process that destroys all microbial life, including spores, generally with the use of an autoclave. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, also known as OSHA, was created as part of the U.S. Department of Labor to regulate and enforce safety and health standards in the workplace. OSHA standards addresses issues relating to the handling, mixing, storing, and disposing of products. General safety in the workplace and your right to know about any potentially hazardous ingredients contained in the products and how to avoid any hazards. The Environmental Protection Agency, also known as EPA, registers all types of disinfectants sold and used in the United States. Disinfectants are chemical products that destroy most bacteria, fungi, and viruses on surfaces. Laws and Rules Laws are written by both federal and state legislature to determine the scope of practice, meaning what each license allows you, the license holder, to do, and establishes guidelines for regulatory agencies to make rules. Laws are also called statutes. Rules and regulations are more specific than laws. The regulatory agency or the state board writes the rules and determines how the law must be applied. Rules establish specific standard of conduct and can be changed or updated more frequently, which is why it is important and your professional responsibility to be aware of any changes. Disease is an abnormal condition of all part of the body or its systems or organs that make the body incapable of carrying on normal functions. Direct transmission, it involves transmission of pathogens through touching, kissing, coughing, sneezing, and talking. Indirect transmission happens through contact with an intermediate contaminated object such as an extractor, a razor, a nipper, or an environmental surface upon which the pathogen resides. Airborne transmission and respiratory droplets are similar in that transmission happens when a pathogen living in our respiratory tract is expelled through coughing, sneezing, and even talking. The difference between the two is that respiratory droplets are larger particles that do not stay suspended in the air for long. 
Infectious disease, disease caused by pathogenic, meaning harmful, microorganisms that enter the body. An infectious disease may or may not be spread from one person to another person. Bacterial spores, bacteria capable of producing a protective coating that allows them to withstand very harsh environments and to shed the coating when conditions become more favorable to them. Cleaning and disinfecting procedures are designed to prevent the spread of infection and disease. At a minimum, disinfectants used in salon and spas and barber shops must be bactericidal, capable of destroying bacteria, virucidal, capable of destroying viruses, and fungicidal, capable of destroying molds and fungi. When a disease is capable of being spread from one person to another, it is said to be a contagious disease, also known as a communicable disease. Bacteria are single-celled microorganisms that have both a plant and animal characteristics. Microorganisms is an organism of a microscopic or submicroscopic size. Some bacteria are harmful while others are harmless. Bacteria can exist almost anywhere. Most bacteria are non-pathogenic, meaning they are harmless organisms that may perform useful functions. They are safe to come in contact with since they do not cause disease or harm. Pathogenic bacteria are harmful microorganisms that can cause disease or infection in humans when they invade the body which is why salons and spas must maintain strict standards of cleaning and disinfecting at all times to prevent the spread of pathogenic microorganisms. Inflammation is a condition in which the tissue of the body reacts to injury, irritation, or infection. Inflammation is characterized by redness, heat, pain, and swelling. Pus is a fluid containing white blood cells, bacteria, and dead cells, and is the byproduct of the infectious process. A local infection is a pimple or an abscess, is confined to a particular part of the body and appears as a lesion containing pus. A systemic infection is an infection where the pathogen has spread throughout the body rather than staying in one area or organ. Staphylococci are among the most common bacteria that affect humans and are routinely found in our environment, including on our bodies, Although most strains do not make us ill, staph is responsible for food poisoning and a wide range of diseases, including toxic shock syndrome and some flesh-eating diseases. Some types of infectious staph bacteria are highly resistant to conventional treatments such as antibiotics. An example is the staph infection called methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, also known as MRSA, occurred most frequently among people with weakened immune systems or who had undergone medical procedures. Today, it has become more common in otherwise healthy people. Clients who appear completely healthy may bring this organism into the salon with them, where it can infect others. MRSA initially appears as a skin infection, resulting in pimples, rashes, or boils that can be difficult to cure. Without proper treatment, the infection becomes systemic and can have devastating consequences, even resulting in death. 
Mycobacterium is the name for a large family of bacteria that is often found in soil and water. Virus is a submicroscopic particle that infects and resides in the cells of a biological organism. A virus is capable of replication only through taking over the host cell's reproductive function. Blood-borne pathogens, disease-causing microorganisms carried in the body by blood or body fluids such as hepatitis and HIV. Fungi are single-celled organisms that grow in irregular masses that include molds, mildew, and yeast. Parasites, organisms that grow, feed, and shelter on or inside another organism while contributing nothing to the survival of that organism. Parasites must have a host to survive. Biofilms are colonies of microorganisms that adhere to environmental surfaces as well as the human body. Quaternary ammonium compounds, also known as quads, are disinfectants that are very effective when used properly on non-porous surfaces. Tuberculocidal disinfectants, often referred to as phenolics, are proven to kill the bacterium that causes tuberculosis, in addition to other pathogens destroyed through the use of hospital disinfectants. Household bleach 5.25% sodium hypochlorite is an effective disinfectant that has been extensively used in salons and spas. Exposure incident. Contact with non-intact, meaning broken skin, blood, body fluid, or other potentially infectious materials, which is the result of the performance of an employee's duties. Be sure to know the proper steps when performing an exposure incident. That is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you found the information helpful, don't forget to share, like, and please consider subscribing. Please keep in mind that this is definitely not a chapter you want to skip over. You must, you must go back and read infection control on your textbook. Keep in mind that I am not able to add all of the information into these short videos. So please go back and revisit that chapter. Very important. Again, I hope you found all of this helpful. As always, don't forget, keep going, keep growing. I'll see you on the next one. Bye guys.